make Hurry, Mr. Bergeron's on Don't forget the popcorn, Frank Coming, dear A power of attorney, people say, well, a power of attorney, but you're an attorney, aren't you? I said, well, actually, I'm a special kind. An attorney is simply an agent, a person that you're appointing to do something for you. An attorney at law, that's me. Um, I'm only called that because the court has given me the power to act for you in front of the judges, right? But you can name an attorney or your representative anytime. Um, typically, the thing that worries people about powers of attorney is they say, oh, but you know, I'm giving away all my power. This person could sign my checks, which of course is true. They could sign my deed. Yes, that's also true. Maybe I don't want that document floating around, right? Well, there are, there are actually two ways to deal with that. One is a so-called springing power of attorney. You can actually put into the power of attorney document language that says, this will only take effect uh, if my doctor certifies or if somebody certifies that I am incapacitated. And that way the document's out, but you know it doesn't take effect until that happens. The problem with that is a lot of people never who are accepting your power of attorney. The question when you're dealing with a power of attorney is, well, well, who's acting on it? I have a, I have a, I, Brenda's heard this line a thousand times, but one of my daughters once gave me a t-shirt that said, the good lawyer knows the law, the great lawyer knows the judge. Now, in this case, the judge is like the bank teller, you know, who's looking at this power of attorney going, uh, I don't think this is, you know, is this good? You know, am I going to take, or your insurance agent, or any number of people. So you want to make sure that your power of attorney is nice and clean, right? So that it's simple for that person to decide. Incidentally, that's why you always want to make sure that your power of attorney is relatively new. Technically, power of, powers of attorney never, like, expire unless you've written it in there. So that if you have one that's 10 years old, it's technically still valid. But the question is, if that judge, the bank guy, is, you know, the bank teller is looking at it saying, this is 10 years old, I don't know, you know, what are you going to do? Are you going to sue him? You know, I mean, how are you going to get him to give you the money, right? So that's why I suggest to people, try to keep your power of attorney newer, right? A second alternative for this springing issue is that you actually have somebody hold the power of attorney. If you're nervous about it being used improperly, we do a lot of that. We just hold the powers of attorney in escrow. We just put them in the file with instructions from the client. Don't release this unless my doctor tells you that I'm incapacitated or somebody, right? So that way the power of attorney is safe. Most people will take a copy of a power of attorney, but you should have it written into your power of attorney that copies are okay. I've had that happen to me. Someone said, well, you know, I can't take a copy. It doesn't say I can take a copy, right? Um, the power of attorney needs to be durable, um, which means it needs, to, it needs to be durable. It needs to say that it's durable or that it's going to survive your subsequent incapacity. It, in my younger days, before the law got, this law got enacted creating durable powers of attorney, the legal rule was that since your power of attorney can always be revoked by you, right, if you have become incapacitated, you have effectively revoked it. And therefore, the power of attorney was no good when you were incapacitated. But that was the whole point of the power of attorney, right? Was to be good if you were incapacitated. So finally, the state, the state passed a statute creating the so-called durable power of attorney. But to be good, it has to say that it's durable uh, or, that, or that it's supposed to survive your, your subsequent incapacity. It does not have to be witnessed. It does not have to be notarized unless the power of attorney is going to be used by someone to sign a deed on your behalf. Next slide. Uh, it, has to, it, can, it should deal with several things. If there's no compensation specified in the power of attorney, then the attorney is allowed to, to pay himself reasonable compensation. If there's nothing said in the power of attorney about gifting, then the person with the attorney can't make gifts on your behalf. Can't make gifts on your behalf. There's case law on that, right? Because the power of attorney is supposed to be acting for you, not giving your money away. But you can give them the power to give your money away. Similarly, uh, and, and regarding selling real estate, you should specify in the power of attorney that they can sell. Similarly, self-dealing. An attorney that you've named can't give himself any of your money unless you say in there that he can. There's a lot, there's a very specific case law on that, right? Um, information regarding this, I'm not going to talk about that. Um, one of the provisions you can put in your power of attorney, uh, and this is really important, is, is something that if you trust that person so much, they're going to be your attorney then you probably trust them so much that if you were going to be getting a conservator or a guardian appointed on your behalf, 
that's the person that you would want. Mm -hmm. So you can, in the power of attorney, say, in the event that, I'm, that I become incapacitated, I want that person as my conservator or guardian. The reason why that is important, right, is that you don't end up with the dueling powers of attorney. I've had that happen, yeah. where you have a kind of an older person who's kind of slipping a little bit, right? And so the, on Monday, the power of attorney is, is Fred, you know? But then Charlie goes to her house that night, and by Tuesday, that one's revoked, and then Charlie's the, the attorney on Tuesday, right? And then, oh, but now it's Fred again on Wednesday, and it goes back and forth like this. Well, if you want to avoid that, and the only way to stop that game is to have somebody, because these powers of attorney are always revocable, mm -hmm. is to have somebody appointed as the conservator or the guardian. But then the question is, who gets appointed? So you may, if, if you, it's a good idea if you want to decide ahead of time who's going to be appointed, you put that right in the power of attorney. Next. Uh, powers of attorney uh, technically don't need to be in writing, but they always should be, because who's going to accept one? They always should have language that says that a third party in dealing with that, with that person can rely on the fact that the power of attorney has not been revoked. That's why you really want to trust the person you're giving the power of attorney to, because even if you later revoke it, right? Well, if he goes to the bank and he's showing the thing to the bank teller, right? How does the bank teller know that, that it, was, it was, wasn't revoked? And, and the power of attorney is going to say right in it, or you should say right in it, that any third party can rely on the power of attorney and assume that it hasn't been revoked. Because otherwise, why would a bank teller ever accept the power of attorney? Because they get the power of attorney and say, well, how do I know it hasn't been revoked? So you always want to make sure so that, so that powers of attorney should be in writing um, and they're effectively irrevocable, right? Uh, next, uh, healthcare proxies. Uh, it's been a while now, but how many people remember Terry Schiavo? Ah, uh, yes, right? The Terry Schiavo case would never have happened if Terry Schiavo had give su given someone a healthcare proxy, which is a power to make medical decisions on someone's behalf if they're incapacitated, right? She hadn't, and so there was the battle between the husband or the former husband, right, and the, and the parents, and they were fighting. So that's why you want a, a healthcare proxy. Uh, it, helps, uh, it helps your doctor sleep better. Right? So if you're, because if you're incapacitated and two of your kids come up to them and they've got differences of opinion regarding what you should be, how you should be treated, what's he going to say? Right? Except get me a probate court order. <laughs> right? So this allows your doctor to be clear on who he's taking instructions from. And it reduces family fights because now people are honoring your decisions. Next slide. Um, what the procedure for, for health care proxies. Um, first of all, if you do a healthcare proxy, it revokes your, any of your old healthcare proxies, right? So if you've got one that you've done, like with a lawyer and stuff, the next time you go to the hospital, when they ask you to, ask you to sign that healthcare proxy, which they always make you do in case you die in the hospital, right? Don't do it. Tell them you've got a healthcare proxy and they should get a copy, mm -hmm. which leads to the issue of where should your proxy be and you should give it to your primary care physician. He or she should have your proxy. So that when the doc, when the hospital calls, and I'm gonna, we're going to take all questions right at the end. So that when the hospital calls your doctor, he's going to say, "Oh, this is the person you should be talking to." Okay. Um, uh, the proxies, as opposed to powers of attorney, do have to be witnessed by two people, uh, and the people that are witnessing it can't be the proxies, right? Uh, and a person who is working a nursing home uh, em or employee or somebody in the hospital can't be one of the witnesses. It be, or it can't be, excuse me, can't be one, can't be one of, can't be the proxy, I apologize, uh, for kind of obvious reasons, unless they're related to you, right? They work for the hospital, but they're also related to you, that's okay. You can limit a health, a proxy's power, but you shouldn't, but you shouldn't. What you should do, if you've got particular things that, ways that you want to be treated by the doctors or in the hospital, you should tell your proxy that. You should not try, you, you have the right to limit your proxy's power by putting instructions in the, in the healthcare proxy saying, you can't do this and you can't do that. Remember though, now who's the judge, right? The judge in this case is the doctor or the nurse in this emergency that's looking at this document saying, now what am I gonna do? Am I gonna listen to this proxy regarding, or am I gonna, you know, maybe it's contradicted somewhere here in these instructions in the healthcare proxy. So you wanna keep your healthcare proxy really simple Incidentally, there's a document called the Five Wishes. There's an inherent problem with those five wishes. I'd be glad to talk to people about that afterwards, but we're close on time. Next slide. Uh, when it takes effect, the proxy takes effect, 
when your doctor says um, that the this is it, that the principal, you, lacks the capacity to make or to communicate healthcare decisions. That's when it takes effect. And it stops, and it has to be, and the doctor's decision has to be in writing. Next slide. And it stops when either the doctor decides that you've regained your capacity or when you revoked the proxy. So interestingly, imagine this scene. So you're in your room, right? And, and, the, and the doctor has said you're incapable of making a medical decision and your proxy is there. And your doctor is saying to the two of you, well, you know, I think, that, I think your mother has to be operated on. And the proxy says, fine. And you don't want to do it. So you say, no, right? And the doctor says, well, I'm sorry, but you know, I've said that you're incapacity, you can't make a medical decision, and so I don't, I'm not counting your decision. But then you say, I'm firing my proxy. Well, you can do that. You can always revoke the proxy, even when you're crazy, right? <laughs> uh, and the reason is that the legislature determined that, that, the, uh, that, that they wanted to leave that power in you. You always, always have the power to get rid of your proxy. Next slide. Uh, you should be talking to your doctor, by the way, about who's the proxy, right? And talking to your family about these kinds of decisions. And that's it. Could I please ask for a round of applause for our wonderful guests? Here?